please welcome Senior Solution Strategy Manager, New Relic, Tori Wielt. Come on, come on, come on, work with me here. Excellent, excellent. I'm so glad you're here. We've got the after lunch slowdown. I'm going to combat that the best to my ability. How do you like the demos today? There's a lot of hardworking engineers that make that happen, and a lot of them are SREs, site reliability engineers, who are my peeps. I totally love them. I'm a solutions manager, and what that means, I think, is you come to me with a problem and I present a solution. Um, Test me on that later today. Um, so what we're going to talk about today is SRE and uh, site reliability engineering. And I think the title is The Principles, The Habits, and Practices of Site Reliability Engineering. And I think I win the award for the longest title for, for a um, session. And um, we've had our own DevOps journey. We kind of went from a monolith, and then we did some DevOpsy things. And now we, are, we have a strong SRE practice that we're very proud of. We run north of 300 microservices, and um, we deliver software between 50 and 70 times a day. And that came from uh, hard work, stumbling over rocks, figuring out how to do it. But we wanted to share with you and get some definitions about SRE, the relationship between SRE and DevOps, and hopefully some tips that you can take back to your organization in terms of how to do SRE, how to get um, better reliability and performance on your apps and infrastructure. I could not do this alone, so I'm going to have two gentlemen come up and join me. Anj, why don't you come up? Anj Dubey is Senior Director of uh, Site Reliability Engineering at McGraw-Hill. Hey, Anj. Welcome. Have a seat. And Boris Grinberg, who is Product Leader, Monitoring Product Leader at GE. Thank you, Boris. So I want to hear from you guys. Um, first, just set a little context in terms of tell me your role. Tell me what you do, and tell me a little bit about your company. I'm sure people have heard McGraw Hill and GE, but they might be surprised on how you define your companies these days. Oh, of so, Anj? Of course. So, get ready to get surprised. So, first thing people people uh, when they hear about McGraw Hill is the first thing that comes to their mind is books. Right. You're when, a book. We book are not store. a book company anymore. We are not a publication house anymore. Uh, we are a learning science company. We improve student outcomes. We deliver education technology at scale. Uh, we have tens and tens of different platforms, uh, personalized adaptive solutions. Uh, for instance, uh, products like smart books, the books that read you when you read it. There are a bunch of other homework managers, ass assessment engines, uh, AI-driven uh, adaptive solutions as well in there. Um, so we have quite a few. Um, on a busy day, we get almost around uh, 10 million users hitting us on our different platforms. And these the, the users that we have, they don't come to our platforms for watching movie or getting inter entertained. They are here for, uh, for, for education, uh, for education and, and we want to make sure that they get a good experience when they come to our platform. Uh, think about a student who has to submit his assignment on today's last date and he clicks on submit and system behaves differently. Uh, you don't want that to happen. So from that perspective, my role is to make sure that that does not happen. Uh, I am Senior Director of, of Performance and Site Reliability. Uh, my responsibility is to make sure that every product and services we build are highly performing, reliable, and fault tolerant, and our customers are super happy, and our systems are, are, are super healthy from, from performance and scalability point of view. So no pressure, right? <laughs> not at all, no, okay. none. <laughs> Boris, why don't you tell us a little bit about you and your organization? Yeah, so my name is Boris Greenberg. Uh, I'm a product leader for uh, Global Monitoring at GE. Many of you, all of you know about GE. GE is an industrial giant uh, formed 127 years ago uh, by Thomas Edison. And this company basically is uh, active in multiple domains and some of the most bold one I will just mention quickly, uh, you know, the aviation engines. Uh, for Boeing uh, aviation and healthcare equipment and uh, uh, renewable energy with all the plants uh, across the globe and uh, uh, power and water and oil and gas. It's just a few of them. So uh, 
I'm part of core tech organization, which are core technologies, and we provide services across the, glo across the globe for the all business units of uh, GE. So uh, one of my responsibilities is definitely SRE uh, team, which uh, managing the monitoring platform. Nice. And uh, as we heard earlier from Nadia, there was some monitoring versus observability. And as we get these new terms, how would you define SRE and what does it look like in your organization? Uh, sure. So for me, um, SRE is applying software engineering uh, principles and discipline to operations. Uh, uh, Google has defined that in a different way. They, they, uh, similar but different. Uh, uh, for, for, for any SRE, um, Software engineering is the most important thing. You have to automate away or out of your, out of your job is what, what, they, what they call it as. Uh, but from our perspective, um, SRE is a central org yet deeply embedded into the agile teams, working very closely with the product engineers, looking at every line of code that is coming in, every user story that is coming in from a reliability lens, uh, uh, make sure that there's no negative impact to it. They, they own uh, the, the, the production deployment, build, manage, and maintaining the production environments, uh, owning the CI, CD, or continuous integration and delivery pipelines, um, incident management, problem management, everything as code, not just infrastructure, but infrastructure as code, monitoring as code, uh, everything as code, um, uh, basically building that software engineering principles into operations is what we do. Nice. And Boris, how would you define us, sorry? Yeah, I would agree, first of all, with everything I said. Okay, ditto, uh, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> so SRE is obviously a quick reaction, in my, in my opinion. It's a, a multi-skilled team which is able to act in multiple areas. This is the most important, in my opinion. And uh, with clear goals, measurements, where they want to go, and basically take it from here and make it happen. This is a team. Nice. Yeah. yeah, and we have the same thing, the, the attitude that it's taking a software engineering attitude toward all the problems they encounter. And we have a hybrid model where we have embedded SRE, so they're in the product team. Uh, they're just an engineer like somebody else, and they're T-shaped, so they have deep knowledge about build tools and things like that. Um, they're the expert in that area, but they are not alone responsible for the performance and reliability. The entire product team is. And then also we have SRCs, site reliability champions, and those are the people who have a little bit more time to look at things more strategically. They look at capacity, things like that. Is it similar at your company? Absolutely. Uh, and, and like you said, reliability is not just SRE's problem. Right. It's everybody's problem to solve. So from, from that perspective, we, and for us, SRE is, is a role, and anybody can play that role, be it, be it product, uh, product engineer or, or performance engineer or database engineer, everybody plays SRE's uh, role. Nice. Boris, do you agree? Absolutely. Okay. Yeah, well, I this agree. Will have you be ditto man, right? For <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Yeah. So tell me, uh, people talk about DevOps, SRE. Is it the next step? I don't know. How, how do you see the relationship between SRE and DevOps? Sure. So, so for me, uh, DevOps is more of a philosophy, is more of a culture. Uh, SRE actually personifies DevOps. So DevOps focuses on agility, uh, speed at which you deliver features to your customer, whereas uh, SRE makes sure that you have the same pace and, 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 and velocity, keeping reliability at the center of every, everything you do. So SRE, reliability, uh, uh, DevOps, uh, how fast you can deliver things. Okay. Yeah. Boris, how, what do you see the relationship? So it's a side by side, in my opinion, the uh, DevOps team and SRE team is just working side by side, and it's like a one big team, a little bit divided, but still together. A lot of collaboration uh, among both teams. Uh, in my uh, in my product, basically, we have actual overlapping with with uh, with this particular uh, roles, as well as SRE members used in DevOps process, uh, and uh, there's a little different processes. So, as uh, speed with uh, DevOps ag agility, Scrum usually DevOps teams using when SRE mostly working on uh, Kanban philosophy, kind of a little bit different way of implementation of Agile. Uh, but uh, it's side by side. Okay. One Great. thing you don't want to happen is make sure that uh, when we had DevOps and we still have, we practice DevOps, right, pretty deeply. But but 
DevOps is not a not an organization, right? It's a it's a culture or philosophy. I thought it? you just uh, changed the name of the team. You, you're done. Right? <laughs> there you go. Okay, good. Right. That's one way of doing it, and most companies do that. Next day you come, DevOps become a sorry, and there you go. You solved all the problems. Yeah, yeah, but, and we're modern, man. But then one of the most important thing is injecting that reliability uh, into your STLC, into your product development lifecycle or software development lifecycle, making sure that every user story, every, every line of code that is being written has been thought about uh, uh, perform uh, performance and reliability as well, which is the most important thing, I believe. Uh, and, and DevOps, using the DevOps tool chain, uh, there's so many other uh, different practices. Asari's just personifies that, uses that, and then injects the, the, the reliability into the DevOps model. Nice. Is yeah. what it does. Yeah, we talk to our SREs about um, everybody wants to shift left, correct? Um, and uh, that's the way, it depends on the maturity of the team that they go into. So a great example is like with DevOps and runbooks, if the team doesn't have a runbook, let's write one. If they have a decent runbook, let's automate it. Um, or if you can get beyond that, work strategically, as you're saying, every line of code, go talk to the architect when they talk about you know, this new shiny technology, have the conversation with them about what's the reliability of this technology, provide that expertise to them, and that's very helpful to the whole organization. And that's where the observability comes in, I guess. I mean, knowing, I mean, you can't improve what you can't measure. So measuring things, knowing about, knowing about what is going on in your infrastructure around your business services, your, your customers, you can't do much. So right. the first step is to basically know all this and what's going on and then think about how do you automate stuff to make sure that everybody's happy. Right. Yeah, I, I can add just that measurements are very important, but you probably should strive and really uh, make the measurement collected automatically so they will be biased less. No bias so measurement should be tr treated automatically, collected, and be absolutely objective. So you should try to do that, and this will help a lot to, to provide a really true picture. So the measurement should be taken not only uh, for the end-to-end -end service, uh, but also per component, so you can know where to focus and where to improve this particular uh, eff effectiveness, or if it's, we're talking about particular uh, slowness or uh, availability of a service, and so on and so on. Okay. Automatic so, measurement. Yeah, now that you're touching on that, I'd just like to hear, do you guys, you know, I assume you're using New Relic, thank you. Um, but do you automate monitoring for your applications or when a service spins up, does it automatically get monitored? Absolutely. So we try to, we try to practice monitoring as code. So we try to uh, make sure that it is instrumented as part of our infrastructure as code. Um, not just, just, just the instrumentation, but alerting, dashboarding uh, uh, in there as well. And, and New Relic helps uh, in, in all of that as well. Uh, for us, the most important thing is to make sure that Everything is hands off, right? Uh, mm. Everything is through through code, so that you can you can easily uh, manage uh, uh, manage and maintain stuff. But um, of course, the the uh, from metrics and and, and uh, SLIs and SLO standpoint, there, there are a bunch of things that you can monitor, right? When uh, when we talk about monitoring, there's a lot of data. There's a lot of data that is involved. But then we are not just looking for data. We're looking for answers, right? We are looking for for, 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 for actionable info. That okay, if something is down, I want to know what exactly is done and what do I do to, to, to fix it. Um, so we have, we basically do, uh, uh, we have a bunch of SLIs that we, that we monitor. We, uh, we also, we, we of course go top down, which is making sure our customers are happy. For the, for, to, uh, that's the first thing that we look at. So we look at app decks, we look at uh, response time, we look at, um, uh, throughput and error rate to make sure that our customers are happy, right? Um, then when it comes to the next level, which is our business service level, we of course look at the response time of business or each and every services we have. But think about a, 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 a business transaction or user transaction that involves five different services within it. And every service is performing well, but the user is, 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 um, is having performance challenges. Make sure that uh, you actually measuring performance of, of, of the user experience as well. Uh, uh, than the business service. And then we also look at, uh, from business service perspective, we also look at 
uh, how efficient my service are, right? How efficiently I'm using the infrastructure resources I have. Like mm -hmm. uh, I mean, in cloud, you can just scale up. Uh, you can do just whatever you want to with it and, and just blow up. And then suddenly you know that, oh my God, you got a $1 million uh, dollar, um, invoice from AWS. So uh, uh, how efficiently you're using uh, the infrastructure resources, how, uh, uh, how effectively you're monitoring and measuring all that to ensure that you're actually following the best practices. And then of course the, the, the infrastructure level monitoring, which is the heartbeat and stuff uh, we monitor. Nice. So just uh, to add to it, so what we measuring basically. So service availability obviously is number one. And uh, I really truly believe you should not uh, measure uh, too many things because you will be not able to focus on them. You should mm -hmm. define the very, very strong and important uh, parameters for your measurements and strive to improve them. Uh, again, you, you probably will never achieve 100%. You should be reasonable in that. You don't need to put unreasonable goals for that because if your team will, will not achieving, you're losing the, the momentum, the cultural uh, issue happen here. Uh, another couple of things that I'm measuring, very, very important is alert fatigue and over basically alerting mm -hmm. when your uh, customers are literally overwhelmed and everybody have, a, you know, uh, move, uh, moving uh, alerts to some side outlook uh, directory. It's a worst case possible for your monitoring people losing trust. Uh, so you have to basically manage, this is what we uh, tracking is, uh, basically operational noise reduction rate. So I'm looking what number of monitoring alerts I receive and how many incidents I actually produce and how, what, what is the, right now I can tell you we are at 97% reduction rate today with, with, uh, with all. So this is all about you detected the stuff in five minutes, the same condition happens, you're still detecting the stuff. You don't want alert your users for this, this amount of stuff. Otherwise you will lose your customer. Mm -hmm. So be very close with your customers. Define this particular, you may, may want to start at 50% or something like that. It took us a long time to come to these numbers. You want to make sure that you talk to your customer, whoever it is, it's operational team, it's application team. You have to make sure what makes sense, what is issue for them. Yes, maybe there is an error in local, there is an error in somewhere else, and you have error rate of 10%, maybe it's normal for this application. You should not assume you should work with your customer. And the bigger you are, the, the more complex this challenge is. Uh, it's a big cultural uh, change for many people who literally maybe don't understand even that particular, but this is SRE work as well, to tune, to make your things, your alerting actionable. If your alert is not actionable, you lost your customer, you lost momentum, you, you, you did nothing basically. This is the most important with monitoring in general. Yeah, um, we're yeah. really clear on um, buying a tool isn't going to give you SRE or change your culture or give you DevOps, but what it can do is it can enable those kind of conversations where people get in a room and have to decide about what we're going to measure, what's important, and let's all get some agreement about that. And things we tend to monitor, monitor internally, we do the SRE golden signals, I think you call that the heartbeat. And um, also we look at fast feedback loops, wanting to make sure that we're alerting on the right things when we do a release. We keep an eye on it and roll back if we need to. And then we go into the, also in the area of optimization. So those are the kind of things we want to, don't want to have the huge bill from our um, cloud vendor. And also we do uh, at, after hours uh, alerts, the number of times somebody gets uh, monitored after hours because humans are a resource that we definitely want, don't want to burn out. Yeah, so. and I have an inter interesting to sh to story to share there. Yeah. How we do that is, uh, I call it a sleep index. Sleep index, nice. So, okay. so we look at we look at every alert that gets triggered during the off hours, and we we uh, we uh, look at that the trend on a weekly basis and find out how can we reduce that. So we basically try to find out the trends uh, trends of these alerts and see how we can uh, automate some of this and make our system self heal for some of these issues. So we basically monitor it every uh, on a weekly basis, come up with trends that and and some some monitors that we think can be automated uh, the the actions. And we try to make our system self heal as part of our, our, our that. And I, the index that I use is sleep index for monitoring sleep that. Sleep index. Do you do uh, anything similar? Yeah, I would like to add about the self healing uh, portion of it. So we do self heal a lot. So self heal, it's a complex. Uh, 
challenge because you might be masking something. You have a process crashing and you're starting it again and it happens every five minutes, you even don't know about that. So it's very, very important when you build a strategy for self-healing, you should be producing a record, maybe an incident, which will be auto-closed by your uh, self-healing tools, but you will have your proper audit and you will see what is happening in your system. I restarted it that many times, something is wrong. My file system is being, being automatically cleaned every single day, so I have to either you know, increase uh, a file system or maybe reduce some debug uh, uh, flags or so, so on and so on. So self-healing is very important. It's part of reliability platform, uh, but it has to be taken seriously. It should not be you know, uh, made on a spot. I would not recommend this to do it on a spot. You would like still to have the full picture of it in order to audit it and improve. If you will just randomly, you know, some service teams, uh, some engineers just, just, oh, I have an issue. Let me jump there. Let me right away. I will put some kind of local cron up and I will restart it. No, this is not the right thing to do. You, you want to have control. You want to see what's going on. You want to improve. So we track today what is my basically self-healing rate out of opened incidents. So I have 100% of incidents and I'm currently, let's say, 10% self-healed. Out of the self-heal 10%, what is my ratio of successful self-heal? How many actually succeeded? Mm -hmm. So if it's just 20% of 100% attempts failed, I need to improve my self-healing strategy. Something is not working there, right? So you have to have control. Don't rush, make it properly, you know, do it, do it step by step. This is what just from, from my experience working very well. Yeah, you can have great performance, but it's because somebody's juggling really well, and that's not definitely not sustainable. So we all agree this is great stuff, and, and we see this a lot with the customers that we help on their DevOps initiatives. Um, they have pockets of success, so various teams are doing okay, but you can't get it standardized across the whole company. So what advice would you give or suggestions would you give in terms of taking it from certain teams and try and get it across an SRE practice across your whole organization? Uh, so, of course, the, making reliability is the most important thing in your... Uh, so for me, performance and reliability is the, is the most important feature we deliver to our customers. So uh, I, I hate when people call it as non-functional because for me, performance mm. is functionality. Okay. Uh, it, it's not functional if it is not performant. So uh, culture change is the most important thing and thinking about all this is, is, is the most important thing. Uh, you know, there's an old saying that culture beats uh, the strategy yeah, all the time. Yeah. So you, if you have the strategy, you want to make, you have to make changes in your culture as well. Um, how we did that was we, we uh, basically brought reliability as part of our, our agile processes. Like I said, we embed the, the SREs, performance engineers, into our, into our uh, uh, teams so that they ask right questions early on. Right from the inception of, of a service we talk about and we think about uh, reliability and performance. Uh, so uh, once you start doing that, when you start practicing it, it's, it's, it's an amazing, uh, uh, immense, powerful feedback loop that you have if you have performance guys sitting in your sprint planning meetings and talking about performance stuff. Mm -hmm. um, and of course, when it comes to infrastructure engineering, uh, uh, hand-holding the, 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 product, the product engineers around the reliability items, um, and of course, making sure that they understand the pain of what SRE goes to when, when the application goes down. You, you one bad check-in of yours, can, can ruin my, my weekend. So unless and until they, they, they become the part of, of, of SRE and, and, and uh, re react on incident, they would not understand that. So for, for us, we make sure that it happens and they understand the pain of, of how operations or SREs go through when, 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 when something goes wrong. So injecting that as part of the culture is the most important thing, I would say. So are you saying developers are on call? They are, yes. Okay. Feel the pain. I know. I know. Because <laughs> yeah, when you, you when it, you write you code it, you and it. it could wake you up, you folk, you look at it in a Absolutely. different way. Yeah. Worth. I would just to, to add another SRE kind of observation and a challenge, right? So we maintain monitoring full stack, starting from network monitoring all the protocols and all the devices, tens of thousands, and hardware and, and, and OS and virtual and physicals and all this. The big challenge with such a big organization uh, as we have is basically things are siloed, right? So GE is 
multiple, maybe hundreds of parallel productions happening right. at the same time. When you produce an alert, and this alert is basically for a CI, nobody understands this business application it impacts. What flow? Is it aviation related? Is it healthcare related? What is this about? So it's very, very important to start tracking. And today I was amazed and I liked this uh, you know, keynote session with Lou. It was amazing that where, where, where basically New Relic is going. Track your relations. Make this connectivity. Uh, it's very, very complex and it's dynamic. Guys, this is it's impossible. It's, many companies try it. You cannot maintain this relation manually. It's never going to work. You have to discover them. You have to uh, work with VMware and understand what is the relation between your physical and, and virtual. You have to work with them and understand which storage attached to it. You have to understand the host and the middleware on it and the database on it. You have to understand your IP in a subnet where it's located. You have to understand so many things. So we, we, try, we, we started doing that. We introduced a graph database right now. And we, one thing I just w would like to tell you all to explore, uh, the GraphQL from New Relic, we literally right now started to consume the relationships that service map, many of you know what service map are, right. where you see multi-component relations. We literally, by API calling that and consuming how application relates to application, how host relates to application. And this is all ephemeral, many of them. AWS, man, we don't know. It's today alive, tomorrow it's gone. So daily, you consume this data daily. And when you produce this alert, you want it to be meaningful. You want this alert to tell, here's the CI impacted right now. Here is related CI impacted. And this is so what you bring it to your engineer, and you may be not be able to self-heal it initially, but you bring to your engineer meaningful data. You're saying, here what I see right here, here's the other components impacted, go make your right decision. You bring the information to your customer. So this is like another layer of abstraction, another layer of bringing tie things together. So we produce a bunch of reports. It's also a story doing in my, in my site. We produce reports saying, here's the CIs, here's their applications, here's the criticality, here's the belonging. So people always have no visibility and understanding. What are you talking about? Is my CI monitored? I have a server. Is it monitored? Nobody knows. Where's the monitor? Even New Relic, guys, we have more than 300 accounts in, in GE. Mm -hmm. If you're trying to mm -hmm. find just an application by name, it's a challenge. So New Relic 1 came and made it for us. We build all APIs, we're using all APIs. We're giving application owners by simple text search, go and find it. One second. Here's my 18 monitors, couple of synthetics, couple of APMs. Boom, go, get it right there. There's a critical P1 incident happening for one customer. Who can remember this tens of thousands of monitors where they're located? How you basically manage your asset management, right? It's a critical question. You want to give, so it's also SRE in my opinion. SRE is usability. SRE is, you have to make your system usable. You need your customers to integrate to you. You, need, you, you absolutely need that. If your outcome is useless for your customers, you didn't achieve much. So this is a cultural change. The cultural change is show them the value. Show them the value. So a lot of conversations. Nice. Show the value. This is what I can do for you and get the feedback. Be on their side, always. Always be on their side. Okay, so, so show them the value. I think, I think that's really great. Anish, if you had a piece of advice for people that are trying to move to an SRE model, would you have any advice for them or a tidbit that they can take? First, please do. Please move to SRE model. Um, uh, of course, uh, like I said, if you, first thing you have to do is start measuring things. Start measuring uh, the SLIs, know your indicators. How do you know your, your customers are happy or not? How do you measure it? Uh, 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 metrics are important, so you have to first understand how do you define that, right? Tens, there are tens of thousands of transactions happening every, every second in your application infrastructure. How would you know whether all my customers are happy or not? So look at those metrics, understand where uh, uh, define clear uh, uh, your SLIs, create the objectives, um, uh, which are your SLOs, and then once you know all that, then give it to the software engineers uh, slash SREs to basically automate things so that they can help uh, 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 resolve all these issues. Um, there's one important aspect to it is, is 
um, the the error budgets that 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 we talk about, mm -hmm. which is. Yeah. Uh, making sure that every team, and our different teams are at different maturity level from reliability standpoint. So you basically measure that and understand which team is in, on a brink of, say, missing or, or, or breaching your SLO. And you inject more reliability items into their, into their STLC or into their sprints rather than features. So you basically block the, the, the feature delivery until and unless you, 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 you fix your reliability goals or, or you achieve your SLOs. Um, so basically uh, measure measure uh, your, your, your SLIs and get your software engineers or SREs to basically stop, start automating uh, your, your pains away. Great, great. Um, we're running out of time here, so I just, um, these gentlemen, it's obvious they know what they're talking about and they're doing it for real in the field and we're coming up on a break and they said they'd be glad to answer questions and also you're gonna be at the happy hour at the end of the day, so buy them a drink, carry a drink over to them and um, feel free to a ask any questions of them. They're glad to share their knowledge. So thank you very much. Thank you, Anj. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Boris. I appreciate it.